subscribers, this is Joe from Art Alien TV, a real quick one for you today. I will be doing another video in a day or two, so keep your eye open for that. And if you haven't seen it already, go back and watch my previous video about the giant plants on the surface of Mars. Some of them are, are sort of around the 900 feet in diameter on the ground, huge vine-like plants, okay? Check it out, it's mind-boggling, okay? And I will be doing an update on that and some of the previous similar things I found as well. So I've got some new images. Okay, so keep your eye open for that. Check out the previous video. The new one will be coming up in a couple of days. Uh, but today we're looking at this, the Cartwheel Galaxy. Now this, this one here is the composite one, which is uh, near infrared and mid infrared. Now the mid infrared is slightly different to near infrared, okay? And I'm going to show you the difference now. You can download them here. The links will be below in the description as usual. And you can download these. If you come to my Gigapan page here, you can click up here and you can link to the images from here. Top right corner, click on the NASA web link at the top here. This is the near infrared and mid infrared. They've merged two sets of images together. And you've got a full kind of color spectrum going on here, really nice. Lots of oranges and yellows and, and um, blues, all sorts of lovely colors in there. And um, this is the other one. So you can actually see the difference here. This one's much more blue, you don't have so much yellow and, and uh, deep red sort of information coming from much further away. And you can really see that this is brighter and much more exaggerated in, in the colors. In fact, this is the one to look at, really, because you can see a lot more in this one. And uh, I've lined them up very carefully for you to sort of animate it from one to the other. And you can see that uh, this one contains a lot more light information from a different part of the spectrum, okay? So really cool stuff. And um, this is the, the page. It, it goes into a lot of detail here about how the images were taken and the difference between mid-infrared and near-infrared. So you can check all this out yourself. There will be a link to this main page down below. And I recommend, I mean, in fact, the larger images aren't that big. Um, they're around 30, 30 odd megabytes. So they're not massive. So even if you don't have much storage on your computer, you can download these. They're not huge. They're big, but they're not huge. Um, so they're not gonna cause a, a small fire in your hard drive, okay? So, um, this was cool. The galaxy formed as a result of a high-speed collision that occurred about 400 million years ago. The cartwheel was composed of two rings, a bright inner ring and a colourful outer ring. Both rings expand outward from the centre of the collision like shock waves. Okay. And uh, despite the impact, much of the character of the large spiral galaxy that existed before the collision remains, including its rotating arms. And you can read all the rest of that yourself. I'm not going to go through all this now. There's some good information here, and they've gone to some length to actually explain it, which is good. I mean, with some of the other missions, with a lot of the um, MRO stuff, the, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter images, we don't often get inf any explanation at all about what we're looking at. And we have to kind of interpret the images our own way, and uh, that's often what we have to do. But yeah, really cool, this one. I'm just gonna zoom in and show you some of this stuff. Now, this is lovely. This, you've got the spiral in the middle, and you've got these kind of parts coming out, like almost like um, like a wheel, spokes, in a sort of kind of spiral pattern almost. It, it, to me, it reminded me of the, those huge fireworks when they go off, and you get like an explosion, and all the, all the stuff coming out the, from the central area. It's really cool. It's like a massive firework display, intergalactic or a galactic, I should say, fire display. This was really nice as well, really smooth spiral galaxy here. But one that took my eye was this little one here, only because it, it looks a bit like a head <laughs> of an animal, like a, a lizard, with a nose here, just there, a mouth here, this dark bit, and a chin. I'm not saying that's what it is, I'm just saying it looks a bit like that, that's all. I thought that was cool. Really interesting. So we got loads and loads of little smaller galaxies, or at least further away galaxies, like these darker sort of orangey red ones in the background that back here, 
those are obviously way, way further back than these brighter, larger ones here that we've got. And uh, there's a lovely one over here, a nice spiral one here, some nice detail in there. So really cool. I'm not going to spend too long on this because what I'm relying on you to do is to actually click on the links below and check these out and zoom in yourself because it's really hard to get across how cool some of this stuff is on screen here, even though I'm doing this at 60 frames per second and full HD. Um, it's really hard to get across how cool this looks in a video, basically, because we've got a lot of information here. And uh, you've really got to zoom in and have a look yourself and check out some of these things. They're really cool. There's an interesting one here, like a spiral one with some weird blobby parts around the outside. Some of them look really crazy. Some of these galaxies, when you look at them up close, um, and a lot of them we've never really seen in this much detail before. So there's lots of new discoveries happening with these images each time a new set comes out. People are looking right into them and finding things that we've never really seen or understood before. So lots going on here. And there'll be lots of this. Uh, I follow a lot of these people that, that do this on, on uh, Twitter and, uh, and social media. And uh, they often post new discoveries in these images. So there's, there's a lot going on here. You can compare both of these together, like I did. If you line them up, you can sort of flip between one and the other and uh, get a nice effect by flipping from one to the other like that. So that's pretty cool. And um, the main link page here, there are smaller versions of these, of course, which you can download as well, which are pretty good as well. You come to the main page here, there's a whole bunch of these, and some of them have got um, more information on like the direction and the size and, and that kind of thing, and the various light information as well. So you can get a lot more information by following the links in the description, as always. This is about two feet high. This is a block, a stone block, which looks like part of a column or a wall or something similar. This is in Gale Crater on Mars. And uh, this is Sol 3549. Now I'll show you it in context here. We've got it up here. We've got, we've got all these um, fragments and rocks on the ground. Okay, if you zoom in here, it's just up here. It's a lot easier to understand these things when you see them in the context of the surroundings. Now this is completely raw. And this, this isn't a complete gigapan. This one is missing one image. Now the people at JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, very clever people sometimes, or should I say they're, they always do this. Every time you get a large set of images, they always miss one out and you have to wait three or four days for it to appear on the website. So you end up doing a huge set like this, which was like well over a hundred images. And then um, there's always one missing. <laughs> they do it every time. It's quite annoying. But anyway, here it is, just here. And we've got this very rectangular looking block with some strange details on it here, which look very strange here, like a carving or of a sort of face type. It, this reminds me of some of the sort of um, carvings you might get in, in Central America, some of the Mayan or Olmec, sort of stonework you see, okay, with, with this sort of angular artistic design. And even though this is completely raw, you can actually see there's green on this here. There's a patch there, and there's a patch up here coming down here and here. If I show you with the magnifier, you'll be able to see that green pushing through the orange filter. So this thing's got some kind of growth on it, it looks like. Um, just here, the green patch there, and here, and on this edge here. Now if I show you this, this is the enhanced clip, and you can really see those green patches appear even more. There's the raw clip on the left, enhanced clip. This has just been color corrected and a bit of contrast added, okay? Brightness and contrast. Um, but you can really see those green patches. Is that some kind of moss growing on this thing? Some kind of planet growth? Algae or some other weird low level vegetation? Who knows? But look at it, look at the shape of this thing. Now it's a bit confusing because there's an object behind it here at an angle. So try and ignore that angled thing there. And look how straight these edges are here. And it's in a block shape, but we've got this corner is kind of broken off here. 
where we have this kind of chin coming down with a mouth, a nose, and what may be an eye there. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily a carving of the head, but there have been many, many found in this area, mainly by me, but also by many other researchers. And I've shown hundreds of them before, okay? So I never write that off. I don't look for heads. I don't look for faces. They just happen to be there, okay? And uh, I haven't found many recently, funny enough. There, there haven't been very many skulls or, or carved heads in recent, um, the last two months. So it's weird. But in some areas you get three or four or five in a, in a sort of small area and then you don't see any for quite some time. This block column, I've called it, okay? And you can see that green even in the raw image, which means in reality, it's probably very green. And the orange filter that they use on these so-called raw images filters out most of the green, okay? Because when you add an orange, it just filters it out. It blocks it out. It turns it sort of brown, okay? So um, there we are. So we've got the JWST or the Jellyscope images here. And we have this one here you can check out. And um, like I said, with this, you've really got to check out these images and zoom in yourself and really look at some of these things up close and think that they're really, really strange, some of them. And uh, some of them are just absolutely crazy looking. Go back and watch my previous video if you haven't already. It's incredible the size of some of these things on the ground. And a new video will be up in a couple of days and I'll be showing more vegetation and some different images that I haven't shown before, okay? and these will blow your mind, I absolutely promise you. Okay, thanks for watching. Smash that like button, I'll see you soon.